My name is Drew McNeil, and I'm a policy analyst with Yukon Government's Department of Environment. I provide policy support for the Climate Change Secretariat. Today, we're going to be talking about logic modeling as a tool for policy design and evaluation. A logic model is a one-page snapshot of a program or policy. It's a helpful tool for communicating what a program is doing, and also the underlying logic of why it's doing what it's doing. It's a results chain, which shows how the program is using its resources, or its inputs, to ultimately achieve its intended outcomes. It shows the inputs into a program, how those inputs are transformed by the program's activities into different outputs, and the logical assumptions around how producing the outputs will eventually lead to the results that the program is hoping to achieve. For example, you can take the plight of the lonely owl who hatched a plan to fit in with all the cool owls by creating an owl scarf for himself. On the far left of most logic models, you're going to find inputs, which are the resources that a program uses. All programs use something, whether that's money, staff, or volunteer time, different equipment. These are all examples of things that a program uses. Activities are what the program or the policy actually does. These are typically verb statements. Things like treating patients, providing grants, providing training or workshops, or building houses. Those are all activities. Some logic models will group a number of activities into one cluster, just to be clearer in communicating the program. For example, if communicating a program is one small part of what a program is doing, it might just be listed as communicate the program. But if you're running a communication program, then that might be broken down into different components of targeting different audiences or using different media. Different levels of detail might also appear in different logic models aimed at different audiences, even if the logic models represent the same program. The outputs are what are actually concretely produced by those activities, so they're typically things that can be quantified, for example the number of patients treated or the number of houses built. Those are outputs that are quite clearly produced by the activities of the program. Outcomes are the goals that the program or the policy is actually hoping to achieve. Not all logic models are going to have short, intermediate, and long-term outcomes. That's going to depend on the program. Short-term outcomes are typically expected to flow directly out of the output so that there's a clear connection between what's being produced by a program and what the program is hoping to achieve. Whereas for intermediate or longer-term outcomes, there are typically more assumptions about how outcomes are going to flow into each other. For example, a typical chain might be producing knowledge or communicating knowledge so that people will learn something and then change their behavior based on that learning, so that they'll eventually see positive longer-term results such as improved health or well-being. Underlying the logic models, there is usually a theory of change. A theory of change is all of the assumptions about how producing these outputs and conducting these activities is eventually going to lead to all the outcomes that the program is hoping to achieve. Some logic models are accompanied by a written narrative or a description of the theory of change, which typically includes either a literature review or supporting evidence to make a case for how conducting these activities is expected to lead to the outcomes that you're hoping to achieve. Here is an example of a hypothetical climate change policy. It's a small research program for climate change adaptation, and the logic model communicates in one page everything that's going on with the program. They have $100,000 to spend on various activities, and they have two staff. They're hoping to conduct research and communicate their findings by producing data, journal articles, research reports, and communicating to other audiences through media interviews or news releases. They're doing this because they want to produce good quality information about climate change impacts and because they want people to be aware of this information they've produced so that they can use it. They are assuming that if they can do those two things, people will use that information and they will use it in their decision making and their planning for the future, so that hopefully communities will be better able to adapt to climate change and will be more resilient to the impacts of climate change. The arrows connect all of the different boxes between inputs and activities and outputs to show how everything flows from an input through the activities and towards the outcomes that the program is hoping to achieve. There's a lot of value in doing logic modeling. One reason is that it is an opportunity to have a good discussion with everyone and get everyone on the same page about what the program is doing and why it's doing what it's doing. It's also a helpful tool just for thinking about the program during the design phase. Logic modeling also helps to lay the groundwork for performance measurement and evaluation by making all of these clear statements about assumptions around causality for the program's activities. A logic model can also help to communicate the program clearly, and it can be used to communicate to different audiences with varying levels of detail. Logic modeling is typically done in a small group, and that group can include not just the people involved in designing and running the program, 
It can also include program funders, beneficiaries, or recipients of a program. It can include a wide variety of people and can be a helpful tool to walk through the logic model of the program so that everybody is on the same page about what the program is doing and why, giving all of these different groups an opportunity to provide input into the design of the program. The process of bringing people together to build a logic model often leads to good discussions, and incorporating multiple viewpoints can bring in new ideas. The process of logic modeling is often just as or more useful than the actual end result of a one-page logic model. Logic modeling is also a helpful tool during the design phase of the program where it is being thought out. There are at least two ways to read a logic model. One is from left to right, and when you're doing that, you're starting with the inputs and activities and trying to build on what you can hope to do with the resources that you have and what outcomes you can reasonably expect to flow from what you're able to do. But you can also read logic models from right to left. For example, you can put global domination on the far right and then work your way backwards to see what activities and what outputs have to happen along the way to getting you towards your desired outcomes. As an example, during the design phase when you're looking from left to right, you might see an activity or an output that isn't connected to the outcomes in the logic model. So that could lead you to asking questions about whether or not you are communicating all of the outcomes that the program is hoping to achieve. Or, it could lead to questions about why the program should invest resources in that particular activity, or producing that output, if it isn't linked to achieving what you're hoping to achieve. On the other hand, if you see an outcome that isn't supported by activities or outputs, then you can ask questions about how you're expecting to achieve that outcome if there are no activities planned right now that might support it. Logic modeling can also help to lay the groundwork for evaluation. As an example, if you want to look two or three years down the road to see whether a program or a policy has been successful at achieving its outcomes, for example, whether communities are more resilient to climate change or not, then it's helpful to have these causal assumptions laid out explicitly beforehand, because it can let you design your evaluation approach, or your research methodology, to examine assumptions about those causal linkages. For example, you can ask questions about whether or not the information was available, whether people were aware of it, and that can help identify opportunities to improve the program through small changes over the short term. Maybe the information was available, but not in a helpful format, or maybe people required training to know how to use it. There also may be factors outside of the control of a particular program. For example, maybe the information was available, people knew how to use it, and they wanted to, but they didn't have the resources available to act on that information and make the appropriate investments in infrastructure. Having this logic model laid out would still show what the program was hoping to do and why, and would still help you to design an evaluation methodology to help control for external variables and to try to isolate the impacts of the program and help you learn whether the program was working as intended. Logic models can also be a very helpful communications tool. There are lots of different ways of presenting logic models and of doing logic modeling. Different approaches may be more appropriate for different purposes or for different audiences. As an example, this logic model here shows the same program, but it shows it without all of the arrows. It's easier to read, so it's much simpler to digest quickly, but it won't be as helpful for future evaluations or for detailed design of the program. But it might be helpful for communicating what the program is doing and why at a very high level to some audiences. So that's a very brief introduction to logic modeling. I wish you all happy logic modeling in the future, and I hope that this video has been helpful.